I want to speak to you tonight on the trials of life, okay, the trials of life. And uh, let me give you the outline. Number one, in trials of life, you need faith in God, faith in God. Number two, you need the peace from God, the peace from God, faith in God, peace from God, and love for God, love for God. These are three things uh, that I want to share with you. You know, Psalms 91 deals with difficulties and dangers of life. Uh, we see warnings of hidden traps, deadly plagues, terrors of night, arrows by day, stumbling over rocks, just to name a few. We truly live in a changing world that no matter where you go, you do not feel safe anywhere anymore. You can be shot at Walmart, a school, a park, or even at church these days. Our comfort, though, should come from knowing Old Testament stories like Daniel in the lion's den uh, or Joseph in jail, and from the New Testament, Stephen being stoned to death and Paul in prison. I truly believe it is better to suffer in the will of God than to invite trouble by disobeying God. And I want to say that again. I truly believe it is better to suffer in the will of God than to invite trouble by disobeying God. The bottom line is this. No matter what you are going through in life, God is with you 24-7, 365. He will take care of you regardless of the challenging things in your life. And remember, to have, uh, you have to have a true test to have an effective testimony. When you see the word testimony, the word test is in that. Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you for your word. And God, I thank you for the Psalms. Uh, they really are songs of comfort. And God, I pray tonight as we look at your word, Lord, that we would be encouraged by what we see and what we hear. And God, I pray that we would have a strong faith and that we would have peace in our life and, and that we would have love for God. Uh, so God, just be with us as we walk down through your word and just get the encouragement from you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And when we talk about faith in God, the word faith and trust, you can intertwine there. You could use either one of those. But when you think about relationships, every relationship begins with trust. You trusted God for your salvation. When you marry, you put your your trust that, that you know, uh, they're going to love you till death do you part. And so we know how important faith is in our life. And when you think about faith and accepting Christ into your life, that is the beginning of your faith walk. And uh, nobody said, folks, it's going to be easy. Nobody said, you know, you, you can see, I, I mentioned some already in the Word of God of, of how people walk through storms of life. And we're all going to have storms. And I heard a preacher tell me one time, you know, you're either uh, coming out of a storm, going into a storm, or, or, or waiting on a storm to come. You know, there's storms in life, and, you know, you can't stop that. And so we just have to realize when things are very challenging, when things hit you unexpectedly, uh, when you get news that maybe it's not such good news, that you need to keep uh, your faith in God. And in verse 1, Psalms 91, 1, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the secret place. I believe that secret place, this is my opinion, is in the presence of God. Folks, we as Christians can be in God's presence. We have it here at church. Okay, just Sunday, you could sense the presence of God here. And during our invitation time, you know, we had movement and God did a mighty work. But the Bible tells us where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I also in the midst. So even in your quiet times, even in those times uh, that you are there maybe by the house, God's presence can be felt. So you have to understand, no matter what you are going through, his presence 
is with you. And when you think of the Most High, folks, there's nobody higher than God. There's nobody stronger than God. There's nobody wiser than God. So being in his presence, I believe with all my heart, there is a solution to every problem you have in life. And when we dwell in his presence, I'm telling you, we do that through faith. Second part of that, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know what that makes me think of? It, it makes me think of, of the, just God's cover over us, okay? He is our shelter. He is our rock. He is our salvation. And, and we abide under him. Folks, nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing comes into my life that he can't handle. And to know that uh, we are under his protection should, uh, you know, give us uh, great encouragement. Now look at verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. And folks, that's the gist of what we are talking about, that second part of verse 2. He is my refuge. It is a place to go, okay? It is a, a fortress. And you, you can see all kinds of fortresses. And I always go back to, uh, you know, even the Calvary times when, you know, like where, I, where I'm from, uh, Lawton, there's Fort Seal, Okay, and, and when you think of a fort, even in the old days, uh, that's where the soldiers were. Okay, and, and you know, when things were going and there was, you know, fights with cowboys and Indians, the key was to get inside the fort. And folks, that's, that's an example of what he's saying here. When all this is coming at you, when Satan is throwing his darts at you, when he is bombarding you with things, God is our fortress and our refuge. My God, and my is personal, okay? He knows everything about you. He loves everything about you. He is our heavenly Father, my God, and in him I will trust. Folks, salvation is the beginning of trust. And I think of the word, you know, just trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So if we're in trials of life, we need to continue to have faith in God. Look at verse 3. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And we know Satan and his demons are about. We know spiritual warfare. Folks, it's important that we recognize spiritual warfare. It is so important that we recognize that, and we, we can do battle. We have to put on our armor every day. We have to be prayed up every day. And from the perilous pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. And again, it's as if a bird, you know, you get the bird example here. Uh, you know, when the eggs hatch, and, and that mama bird just, just hovers over them and, and just takes care of them. When it's raining, when it's, when it's pouring, the mother uh, puts the feathers and all uh, her whole body and, and her wings over, protecting that, the bird. And folks, that's what God does for us. Sometimes, sometimes trials just come raining down. And have you, have you noticed that, you know, it, it seems like it runs in spurts. You know, there, there are times we have calm times in our life, and I, I've learned to just thank God for the calm times. But when Satan starts throwing these darts at us, man, we can just come under the shadow of his wings. His truth shall be your buckler. And folks, his truth is the word of God. And, and I, I always like to do this every once in a while, is by what day of the week it is, I'm, you know, day of the month, excuse me, I take the first psalm and the first proverbs and read through those that way. And you're learning, you know, the comfort that you get from the psalms. And uh, proverbs is the wisdom chapter. So the, his truth, all right, is our shield and our buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night 
nor of the arrow that flies in the day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. You know what he's saying there in those two verses? He's got you covered all day long, all day long. And what we have to do, no matter what is going on in our lives, we have to have faith in God. We have to realize that, that he is in control of the situation. And that is very, very important. Look back at Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. So the key also is prayer, folks. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And folks, we get overwhelmed by life sometimes. Uh, you know, I think one of the times that uh, is the hardest and we get just sometimes overcome is when someone dies or someone in our family dies or someone that we are close to dies, okay? And, and you know, it, there's nothing wrong with having grief, okay? Jesus wept, all right? Jesus wept at Lazarus' grave. But we should not be overwhelmed with things in life. See, Satan wants us to feel overwhelmed. Satan wants us to feel like there is no hope. Satan wants us to feel like, you know, we're, we're, our, we're at the, our wits in. We're, we're, we're our, at the end of the rope. But folks, God is here with us. He hears our prayers. And it says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Folks, we know what rocks are, okay? They're, they're, they're strong. And, uh, you know, we, we grew up in Lawton and uh, Wichita Mountains uh, there, and Mountain Scott was there, and there were just huge boulders on that mountain, okay? And, and when you get on those uh, and you're on top of those, uh, you feel like sometimes when you're up there and you can just see, see Lawton from this, this Mount Scott that we have, you know, you feel like you're almost to the sky when you look out over that. Well, folks, that's what God is. God is up there. He is taking care of us, and our feet are on solid ground. Folks, you take those boulders, you're not moving them, okay? Man is not moving them. It takes great big machines to do that. And that's that's a that's thing that we ought to uh, be excited about. Jesus is our rock. God is our rock. He is our foundation. Verse 3, for, uh, for you have been a shelter for me a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. And even the Bible says, you know, water's 70 years, okay? It's like a vapor. When you compare 70 years or 80 years to all of eternity, folks, I am telling you, and I tell you the other thing, I truly believe that God is going to erase much of our memory those things that we were overwhelmed with, those things that maybe we didn't handle well, I think he's just going to erase that. And when we get to heaven, it's going to be a perfect place. Yes, there's labor down here. Yes, there's disappointments down here. Yes, there are hurts down here. Yes, there, there are distressing situations down here. But our God up there is with us and for us. And I will abide in your tabernacle forever, and I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Listen to me, folks. I know you know this. You can trust God, folks. God has never let you down. You say, well, he's let me down. No, you, I, you and when I, when I, I want to say this the right way, uh, he, he has a purpose for everything he does. And sometimes right now, we don't see that purpose, okay? He has never lied to you. He has never let you down because he is doing what's best for you. And sometimes we don't see it. A lot of times we don't see it. But to the Christian, he really is. I will trust in your shelter. For you, oh God, verse 5, have heard my vows. You give me the heritage of those who feel, uh, fear your name. 
You will prolong the king's life and his years for many generations. And I said, you know, the night of, uh, you know, my fellowship, my 20th anniversary, I thank God for my parents. I'm telling you, they had us in church from birth on, okay? I have, when it talks about heritage, uh, I had wonderful Christian parents. And I believe I, I turned out the way I did, one, in spite of myself, and two, because of some two awesome parents that loved the Lord. And, you know, I, I watch my father sometimes. He worked for Southwestern Bell, and uh, they had contracts that come up, you know, like five or so years. And there were times when uh, they were all out on strike. And I seen my dad go work. I mean, he did hard labor during that time, waiting for them uh, to get back uh, to work. Okay, and so and and so God always gets us through the tough times in life. And it said, "And he shall abide before God forever." Verse seven: O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Now, folks, we as Christians, we have faith in God. And, you know, I mean, that word alone, uh, that song alone, have faith in God. You know, he's on the throne, have faith in God. Uh, We need to have that praise in our heart. And we do not need to, uh, you know, when things are going bad or we're, we're in trials or you know, some, something bad happens to us. Folks, that's the time for us to rise above those things. Our testimony is so important in a time like that. So in the trials of life, you need to have faith in God. Number two, you need peace from God. Peace from God. Psalms 91.7, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near to you. And you know what that tells me? Just like the day in which we are living, things are falling apart all around us. I mean, third world countries, I mean, hunger, uh, pestilence, famine, uh, you know, all kinds uh, of drought. I mean, there's Texas now, half of Texas is on fire uh, from what I saw in the news. You know, there's so many fires going on down there. And, and we do need to pray for things like that. But we don't need to worry about things. God takes care of us, all right? It shall not come, to you, come near you. Verse 8, only with your eyes shall you look and see the rewards of the wicked. And again, he's talking about, you know, sometimes we see people that maybe be shady character of maybe people that have probably gotten things the wrong way. And we are envious of those people. And folks, I am telling you, we should not envy anyone according to the word of God, especially someone that is not walking with God. Folks, you think about it. We are saved. We have been sealed. We are going to heaven. Folks, it's like I t- talked about uh, Sunday, this past Sunday. Folks, money's not going to make you happy, folks. All right? Only a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and knowing where you're going and knowing what's, go- what's going to be there when you get there. All right? Verse 9, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High in your dwelling place. Notice the word again, Most High. Notice the word Lord, capitalized. He is Lord of our lives, and he has a dwelling place. That's why I've said it many times, folks, Sundays is my favorite day of the week. Why? We come to the church. We come to church. We come to this sanctuary. All right, and, and I'm telling you, just, just to watch over here when the music is going and Steve and the choir and the praise team are all doing their thing, I just can listen. Sometimes I'll just shut my eyes and listen. And, and, and I even have pictures of heaven. Can you imagine multiplying 500, I don't know, a million times? You know, you think of the angels and all the praises and all that's going on. Oh, folks, I'm just telling you, uh, uh, heaven, let me put it this way. Heaven will be the most peaceful place you have ever seen. Just peace. Okay, there's no war in heaven. There's no sin in heaven. 
There's no temptation in heaven. And we can be at peace with God while we're here on earth. That's the key, folks. You know, in, in some phrase, all hell could be breaking out around us. And we as Christian, Christians can still have the peace of God in our lives. And that's what he said. No evil shall befall you, verse 10, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Folks, I believe with all my heart, we have a guardian angel. And I know sometimes I've, I've got a little bell on my motorcycle, and it's, it, it's, a, it's a bell, you know, the, the saying is don't ride faster than your angel can fly on a motorcycle. And I know I, I said something Sunday. Uh, no, it wasn't Sunday. It, it was before I said, I said something, well, I got to ride. And I had a lady not too long ago, preacher, I wish you wouldn't say that. I wish you wouldn't tell us when you ride. And I said, ma'am, the reason I tell you when I ride is because so you can pray for me when I ride. But folks, I'm serious. I know accidents do happen, but I believe in the divine. God's already picked my death out. Not that he picked it out. He knows the day I'm going to die. And I'm just saying, motorcycles, it's, it's my, I used to play golf. I used to fish, but they're just something about Monday. I left at three o'clock, went out for two hours. And folks, that is heaven to me. All right. I just rode out there. God's watching over us. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Focus on him. In their hands, they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. And again, I think this is a a reference, a prophecy of Jesus himself when he was up at the temple and, you know, and and Satan said, you know, cast yourself down. Folks, Jesus could have done that. But folks, we don't take advantage of things. All right. He, He used the word of God against Satan three times. Yes, God could have put angels to catch him. But why, why would he do that? Why would he even think about doing what Satan wants him to do? It makes no sense at all. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, and the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Folks, I'm telling you, God is still in the miracle business. He's still in the miracle business, and I praise God for that. Nothing's going to get to you, all right? Nothing's going to hurt you if if it's if it's not your time then you do not have to worry and there's two two things i want you to see under the word peace we as christians need peace of mind and peace in our hearts peace of mind is just being right with the lord okay it's 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 you know that that lack of worry Peace in mind is, man, when you lay your head on the pillow, uh, man, you go to sleep. You just, you just think, man, I did my best today. And again, it, you know, we all mess up. We all need to confess our sins before we go to bed. But just having that peace uh, that you please God in some way or you took advantage of an opportunity that he set before you. And then peace in our heart. And that peace in the heart has to do with sin in our lives. Folks, we should never go to bed with sin in our lives. We can confess God. We can confess to God our sin. And so those two are important. And then the other piece I want you to think about is peace with God, peace with your family, and peace with your fellow man. You know the thing that's really missing in our world? Folks, it's peace. It's peace. There's all kinds of wars out there. Uh, there's, you know, family, family members that don't even talk to one another. Uh, there's, there's so many, you know, just hate. There's, they're just, they're, there's not a lot of peace in the world in which we live. And I know it's because so many people don't know the Prince of Peace. And we as Christians, we should have peace in our hearts and in our minds. We should have peace with God and with our families, and with our fellow mans. Colossians chapter 3. Look at Colossians 3. Colossians 3. 
The Bible says, verse 12, therefore as the elect of God, Christians, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long suffering. Those are the fruits of the Spirit, some of the fruits of the Spirit. We need to put these on, bearing one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But 14 and 15 is what I wanted you to see. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called into one body and be thankful. But above these things, put on love. Folks, God is love. God is love. Perfect love. He sent his son, Jesus, who was perfect. So with Jesus in our hearts and God as our Savior and Lord, we can have the peace of God in our lives and rule in your hearts one body and be thankful. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the positive man that he fell down three flights of stairs and he got up and realized he didn't break nothing. He said, man, I'm glad that's over with. All right. You know, we, so, so many times we get upset. It just, I mean, it's like a flat tire. Folks, if you drive long enough, you're going to have a flat tire. I've seen people out in the rain. I saw a guy one time, he had a flat and he was just shaking his head and it was raining on him and he kicks the tire. I'm like, well, what is that going to, that is not going to make it go up. All right. Make the best of these challenging situations. All right, have the peace of God in your life. Then the last thing, faith in God, peace from God, and love for God. In our text, look at verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Folks, the love of God should just overwhelm us sometimes. The unconditional love of God should just overwhelm us sometimes. God loves me in spite of myself. And uh, it's, it's just, it's really, really good to know that God loves us, but we also need to have that kind of love for him. Not just because of what he's done for us, but because of who he is. Folks, his whole character is love. Okay, his, his whole character, and we as Christians need to have that kind of love. Uh, we need to honor him. We need to respect him. We need to love on him. Just, just say thank you, God. Just thank you uh, for, for all things uh, in life. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Folks, God has given to us uh, his love. And, you know, when I, when I think about, you know, God's love for us, the Bible tells us to love God with all of our heart and all of our soul and with all of our mind. So he, 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 is, he, he gave us his best, and we need to give God our best too. And we, we really can. That's one of the things when I was writing this a couple of weeks ago. You know, you think of all that he's done for you, and when these trials come along, you don't need to abandon him. I, I, you know, I've, I've heard people say in, in tragic situations, well, where is God? Where is he? Well, folks, he, he never moves. He's right there with you, okay? And we don't need to abandon God when these troubled times come. And, and, you know, we need to love him more. We need to get closer to him. We don't need to run away from God. We need to run to God, all right? And, and, and his love is just freely being given to us. Man, he knows everything about you, uh, everything. And, and he really does. Uh, God's love uh, can really permeate your being in troubled times. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. 
Look at verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with his might through his spirit to the inner man. And folks, I've heard people say, man, I, I just can't go on. I just can't do it. Well, I have a problem with that because of the Bible. What does the Bible say? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And again, I think we mispronunciate the enunciation there. I can do all, a lot of people put the on all. I can do all, which is good. But the key there is through. On my own, sometimes my, I, I, I'm just telling you folks, some my, sometimes my flesh don't want to do it. But when I think of the love of God, and I think of the ways that I can show my love for him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know what I believe with all my heart? I believe you are stronger than you really think you are. But you know who tells us we're not strong? You know where that comes from. Folks, that's Satan. Satan wants to kick you and keep you down. He wants to strip you of your strength. All right? But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Why? Because we have his strength. To be strengthened with his might through his spirit. And that's the other thing, folks. We have the Holy Spirit. We're not by ourselves. We don't have the Bible memorized. We don't know everything the Bible says. But we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, and it should be strengthening us. That Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. What did we say in the first, first point? That you may be rooted and grounded in love. Now, folks, we have to understand the winds are going to blow. The rains are going to come. Floods are going to come. And if we are not rooted and grounded in that love, we are going to come apart. We are going to come apart. And, and, and during these times, these difficult times, these trials of life, I'm telling you, the love of God needs to just, you know, a well up inside of you. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length in the depth of height and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. How deep is God's love? <laughs> it's deep, folks. How high is God's love? High as the heavens. How wide is God's love? You see the all-encompassing part of that? And I know sometimes we don't feel loved, and I, just, I know sometimes... We don't feel worthy of his love. Humility, there's nothing wrong with humility. But don't let Satan beat you down about how much God loves you. And, and don't let him get away. You love God. If you are a Christian, you love God. And we need to understand the depth of God's love. And, and the key there is God gives us his love. So we have a deep love. We have a high love. We have the ability to even love the unlovable. That's how deep his love is. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Folks, God's not finished with you yet. All right? You are not full yet. Okay? And I really think, even with our hearts, you know, when, when we put Christ in our hearts, he occupies that, but he doesn't, you know, very few people just, boom, automatically are mature in Christ. You have to grow in that love. You have to memorize scripture. You have to pray. You have to do these things so that love will grow in, in the fullness of God. Now, this is the verse I love. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let me paraphrase this. Our God is able. Our God is I don't care what situation you're in, okay? Debbie Armstrong, I, I, I'm going to say it later. 
But folks, I'm telling you, they called me Saturday and they gave her a 5% chance of making it. Danny called me this morning and said, her, her, she, her, you know, uh, her heart is fine. Her heart is fine. There's no blockage. There's nothing. Everything changed. 45 minutes in cardiac arrest. And the doctor said it, it could have been a blood clot, but most blood clots kill you. And his next words was, I don't have an explanation for what happened. I do. Prayer, folks. Never, never give up. Never. She, by all medical purposes, wasn't going to make it. But God said, it's time for a miracle. And that's what we have seen. The only thing, uh, they tried to get her off the vent today and wasn't able to do that, but that's not shaking them up. That's not, they just said, we're going to let her rest all night and we're going to try it again tomorrow. Folks, that's, our God can do anything. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. What is that power? That's that dunamis, that Holy Spirit power. Okay, that's God, that's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit inside of us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. <laughs> Folks, this ain't a one-time deal. Salvation doesn't expire, all right? There's no date of expiration. I mean, we're going to die. I understand that. But his love is forever, and our love for him needs to be forever and ever and ever. And you know Proverbs 3. You know this last one. This is one of my favorite. Matter of fact, on my business card, it's, it's on my business card. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And always acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Folks, all of life is trust. Trust, trust. You trust in the banking, where you put your money. You trust that it's going to be okay. You trust in weddings. You, you trust your spouse. In business deals and partners, you wouldn't go. I would hope you wouldn't go into partnership if you didn't trust your partner. All of life is trusting. And folks, we trust in a almighty God. And God will take care of us during these trials of life. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you that really we should be thanking you for trials because you, the trials make us stronger. We learn more in trials than we do in successes. And God, I just pray that you would help us understand that there are just going to be times in our life where things are happening and they're out of our control. We can't, we can't change certain things in life. But God, we can trust you through the whole uh, process. God, in these times when things seem to be falling apart, we can still have the peace of God in our lives. And God, I pray for peace. Lord, everyone in this sanctuary everyone that's listening out there, God, I pray that you would just give them the peace that passes all understanding. And God, thank you for your love. Man, it's so deep, it's so high, it's so real, it's so unconditional. And God, I pray that as we walk through this thing called life, that we will be a testimony for you. That no matter what's going on, we are going to trust you. God, we love you, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for our Wednesday night Bible study. God, thank you for just, uh, just being here. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And most of all, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Because, Lord, he is everything. You are a rock. You are a rock. You are a refuge. And Jesus is our Lord and Savior. What else do we need? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.